P-Ray shop. Today we're going to be working on this here 15 horse, four stroke Honda Alpha. We're going to be putting a water pump in it. Now the same procedure is going to work for the 9.9 .9 horse from 1997 all the way up to 2002. They all use the same income. So let's get started. Now the first thing we want to disconnect is the shifting linkage. It's located right here in front of the lower unit, about halfway up. I'll zoom in here a little closer, show you a little more detail of it. What we've got here is a, uh, is a threaded barrel nut and a jam nut, and this is the actual shift rod. And you'll notice when you move the shifter into forward, it pulls it upward, back down to neutral, and back down into reverse. So let's put it in the neutral position, and we're just going to take this little jam nut loose. Then we'll just thread the, the barrel nut right off the end of the shift rod. Now you just want to turn this just enough to where it turns loose of the lower shifting linkage. There you go. Next we're going to remove the lower unit. Now the lower unit is held on with four bolts, two on each side. One here, one here, two more on the other side, just like it. Now these are going to be eight millimeter bolts with 12 millimeter heads on them, so let's just take those out. So taking out the last bolt. Right. Now we're ready to drop this lower unit out here. Now the lower unit is doweled in place, so you're going to have to kind of wiggle it around to kind of get it to work itself off of those dowels. Kind of wiggle it around. There we go. It's going to come right out of there. Now, what you also have to deal with once you get this lower unit out is uh, there is a water pipe and there is a drive shaft that goes from the top of the lower unit here up into the power head. Now, if that falls out, it's no big deal. Just set it aside and we'll just put that back in there when we get ready to reinstall the lower unit. Now the water pump is actually housed this little black plastic housing on top of the lower unit. So let's put it on the bench and let's see what we got. Next we're going to remove the four screws that holds the pump housing in place. There's two here, two here. Then we'll lift that cover off and take a look at that impeller. Now we got those screws out of the way. You may have to do a little prying on it to pry that thing loose. We're going to take it on off of there. Oh, oh, well, yeah, I'd say we've got a problem with that impeller there. That impeller just slides right off of the shaft there. There's a there's a little flat spot cut in the impeller that aligns with a little flat way that's cut on the shaft to to drive it. And uh, yeah, that's uh, our housing looks really good. But uh, that impeller there, it's not looking so hot. Yeah, for comparison's sake, uh, there's our old impeller, and here's the new one. <laughs> you can tell there's quite a bit of difference there. Yeah. All these little rubber veins, what happens is over a period of time, they deteriorate or rot, and they just start coming apart and uh, just leaves you with nothing there. Yeah, so. so let's go ahead and get this pump plate off and uh, see if we can find some of these veins in here. Now the pump plate just sits on here with a couple of dowels. We're going to real, be real careful with it and pry that up. Set that aside. Look here. Now there's some of the veins right there. Look at that. Now what I'm also going to do is I'm going to go ahead and remove the lower pickup grate right here. There's just a screw on this side and then there's a little captured nut on the other side there and we'll see if there's some more uh, of the impeller debris down here in the main pickup because you want to get that stuff out of there. Now, once you get that screw loose and take that grate out of there, oh yeah look here guys let me let me zoom you down in here check this out. Look at all those little pieces of rubber right there. Look at that. I'm going to go ahead and drop the other side of this grate out of here. I'm going to try to catch all these rubber parts. Yeah. 
this is the other side of our grate here there's the nut that holds the other side of that screen in place but look at there there's your impeller right there sure enough now some of that may have worked its way up into the cylinder head too so what we'll do is uh, we'll take some compressed air and we'll blow through the uh, intake tube coming out of the top of the pump going up into the cylinder head and make sure that we got a good free flow of air up through there all right well now we're just going to clean up all these parts clean up this pump housing real good inspect it for any kind of damage or nicks or gouges and then we're going to put all this back together all right so now we got everything cleaned up and ready for reassembly now i went ahead and put the pump plate back on the dowels the way it's supposed to got that plate cleaned up real good also have the pump housing cleaned up real good that looks real real nice there's no gouges or big burrs or cuts or anything in it so that's going to work real nice now what i'm going to do before i reassemble all this is i'm going to take a little light coating of grease and i'm just going to put just a little trace inside all this to to give this a little bit of initial lubrication until the water hits it that way we won't possibly burn up our pump impeller before the water gets to it real good now one other thing i want to show you here when you put this water pump on it has that flat that it runs on that's what drives it on the uh, the input shaft here now this uh, the veins of this pump have to be oriented properly when they're inside this housing otherwise when you reinstall it if you don't get it in there correctly you can damage the pump on the initial startup now normally this uh, input shaft will turn clockwise as you look down from the top it's going to turn in a clockwise direction so that would tend to kind of curve the veins in that impeller in this direction and so that's the way you want those veins in that impeller when you uh, install them. So what I'm going to do is we're going to pre-install the impeller in the pump housing. Makes it a little easier to get it all back together. And so what we'll do is since our pump housing is going to be sitting like this, we know that uh, our impeller has to be turning clockwise as viewed from the top. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to kind of twist that impeller in there just like that. And as you can see, I've got it kind of offset to match the offset in the case so that the shaft will go through it. And you can see I've got those impeller blades oriented correctly. So when that's on the, on the lower unit, everything's lined up and turning the right direction. So now I'm going to pop this back out. We'll put a little, little bit of grease on that and then reinstall it. And as I said earlier, it doesn't take just a very, very small trace of grease. It's just, uh, you don't want to put too much in there because you don't want it gumming up the inside of the engine. There again, we want just enough in there just to kind of give that impeller something to ride on until the water hits it. There we go. So it just took just a very little amount. That's all we need. Okay, so as we stated earlier, we know that the uh, impeller has to turn clockwise when viewed from the top. So I'm going to start this in here, turn it clockwise, just like that. And you can see I've got the, the veins oriented correctly. And then we're just going to line up the flat on the impeller with a little flat on the drive shaft right here. Just like that. Then just to line it up on the dowels, push it down in place, and start your bolts. All right, there we have it. Now we're ready to reinstall the lower unit. All right, so now we're ready to reinstall the lower unit. Now what you want to do is have you a couple of bolts handy, a wrench, and what we're going to do is uh, the water outlet pipe, you want to start it into the pump housing first. Then you can scoot it on up in there a little bit further. Then you can install the output shaft onto the input shaft on the lower unit. And then we'll kind of wiggle it on around up in there, and then finally we'll align it up on the dowels, get it pushed up in there all the way, and then we'll start a couple bolts in. There we go.
you go, just kind of give it a wiggle. There we go, and we'll start a couple of bolts. Okay, I'm doing my final tightening of my lower unit bolts. And as we get up there kind of close, I like to kind of work my way around and not just really tighten them down all at one time. That way it kind of settles them down onto those dial pins evenly. Just work your way around them. Get them all snugged up. All right. Now all we got left is to hook up the shifting linkage. So I'm about to reconnect the shifting linkage. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab this upper portion of the, the shift rod. Then I'm actually going to work the shifter down very carefully until it comes in contact with the shifter rod on the lower unit. Now I'll just start it down there. And just before I draw up the, the jam nut on it, I'll just kind of run it through the shifting once or twice to make sure that it shifts into neutral, forward, and reverse. Then we'll jam that jam nut on there. Just like that. Alrighty guys, that's going to complete our water pump replacement for a Honda 15 horse outboard. You know, it's not really a bad job to do. Heck, you know, if a whole redneck like me can do it, I know you can do it too. Alright, well as always, appreciate y'all watching. Y'all have a good one. See y'all next time around.